very powerful technique for graphing is to use transformations of functions. For our examples, we're going to use f of x equals the absolute value of x, although there are seven other basic functions we could have used. Now, there are at least three transformations we can talk about. The first is a vertical shift. If you have y equals f of x, and if you add, then the whole graph moves up. If you subtract, the whole graph moves down. The second type I call reverse horizontal shift because if you go y equals f of x and if you add something then it shifts to the left which is sort of the reverse of what you would expect. If you have f of x minus some number then you shift to the right. Notice this must be included inside the parentheses. Finally we have reflections about the x-axis with y equals negative f of x, the y-axis f of negative x, or the origin negative f of negative x. It would be a good time to go back and review the lesson on tests for symmetry to help you understand these concepts. So let's jump in here. f of x equals the absolute value of x. You're supposed to memorize that. But suppose we have f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 2. If we look at our choices up here, notice it's a vertical shift because the subtraction sign is outside of the absolute value. So we take the entire graph and move it down to units. So this f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 2 will look exactly like the original f of x equals the absolute value of x but it's shifted down 2 vertical shift of 2. Suppose we have f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 3 notice negative 3 is inside the absolute value so we now have a reverse horizontal shift because it's subtract you would expect to shift it to the left but because it's reverse horizontal shift we're going to shift the whole thing to the right, three units. So that would be the graph of f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 3. Finally, suppose we do something outside of the f of x. Notice the first two choices. We did something after it or inside the absolute value. But if we take negative f of x, that has the effect of reflecting around the x-axis. So we simply use the x-axis as a mirror and have the v upside down. So f of x equals negative f of x, which in this case would be negative, the absolute value of x, would have a graph that looks exactly like this. All of these should be checked on a graphing calculator or utility.